Hello there, our paper today is Biology 2016, our paper 1, which is multiple choice for grade 12. Um, let's just, just straight away get to the paper, to question 1. Question 1, which of the following is not a characteristic of all living organisms? My answer was ejection. Ejection is part of uh, holozoic nutrition, meaning that it doesn't happen in all living things, for example, plants. Or, or maybe worms or insects, you know, ejection is, is part of holozoic nutrition which happens in humans or let me say mammals and reptiles. It's the opposite of ingestion. Okay, ejection takes place in the anus. Plants have no anuses. Question two. Uh, some stages in the preparation of the epidemics of an onion for observation under a microscope are listed be below. Which order do these stages occur to bring the image into focus? So these are the stages, and my answer was three. Okay, you always begin with by peeling. You peel the epidemis of the onion, then two, which is place the epidemis on the glass slide, then number five, add iodine solution to the epidemis, then four, cover the epidemis to the cover slip, and then finally focus the microscope. You add iodine to simply stain the tissue for the tissue to be more visible. The prof apart from that, the iodine also helps the cover slip to stick. Okay, you add iodine to stain the tissue. So my answer there was C. Number three, the diagram below shows an experiment to demonstrate biological processes at the beginning and after two hours. So at the beginning, look at the levels there. They solute on this side. Therefore, sugar solution colored with dye. Here, this is just pure water. After some hours, which is two hours, the level here is higher than this other level here. And the solute or the dye seems to be on both sides of the membrane, of the selectively permeable membrane. And the question follows, what, process are, what processes are responsible for the movement of water uh, and the dye? Water moves by osmosis and the dye moves by diffusion. A diffusion water or let me say the diffusion of water through a semi permeable membrane is what is referred to as osmosis so osmosis is a, is a special kind of diffusion a term only ref, used to refer to water because if you check here even the dye diffused through the membrane but we don't use the term osmosis for other solutes we just say diffusion if it's water we specify osmosis provided there's a membrane involved here so our answer there is b Next question, a food sample solution was mixed with 2 cubic centimeters of Benedict solution and gently heated for 3 minutes. What is the possible observation and conclusion from this experiment? This is used to test for reducing sugar, presence of reducing sugars. So my answer is B, color change uh, from blue to orange. Okay, and conclusion, once it changes like this, then reducing sugars are present. You can talk about proteins, you can talk about proteins, and then here you can talk about reducing sugars being present when the color remained blue, because Benedict's solution is blue, and this blue color is brought about by copper two uh, ions. When they are reduced to copper one ions, the appearance changes to orange. Remember, in chemistry, uh, transition elements form colored compounds. Okay, so when they are in form of copper 2, they are blue. When they're in form of copper 1, they become orange. So the answer there is B. The next question is, um, which component of a balanced diet is used to make new enzyme, enzyme molecules? Remember, enzymes are protein in nature. So the answer is C, proteins. Number six, which of these correctly identifies the nutritional related disorders and their causes? Kwashoka, this is lack of protein lack of vitamin D or any other component that uh, helps in bone development, lack of iron, anemia. So kwashoka protein, these two qualify. Here, C, no, but calcium. Calcium is a great component in a formation of bone crystals, okay, the solid part of bone. So calcium, then iron. My answer is D. Lack of protein can cause kwashoka. Lack of calcium can cause rickets. Lack of iron can cause anemia. Next question, which is seven. Um, what substances contain magnesium and nitrogen in plants? Chlorophyll contains magnesium. Okay. And the nitrogen is found in proteins. My answer is C. Question eight. Um, the diagram shows a section through a leaf. 
seen under a microscope. In which part is the carbon dioxide concentration lowest on a sunny day? On a sunny day, it means photosynthesis is taking place highly. This is our our phloem and this is our xylem. The xylem taps water from the ground to the upper parts of the plant. So we cannot talk about carbon dioxide here, like, yeah, significantly, no. But in these regions, these are regions that are using up carbon dioxide. So there's this concentration gradient, which is created, which leads to carbon dioxide to diffuse inside here. This is the, uh, the cuticle layer or the upper epidermis. It doesn't really carry out photosynthesis so if there's any carbon dioxide here it's likely to diffuse in the palisade region so for this question you're free to go and research more but for this question i felt my answer should be a my answer should be a um we'll get to question nine question nine which of the following is not an importance of the prophetic nutrition should understand what saprophytic nutrition is and the types of organisms that uh, carry out saprophytic nutrition. Um, I would say fungi are the organisms that carry out saprophytic nutrition. First one, decomposition of dead matter, yes. Which one is not an importance? So saprophytic nutrition involves, you know, includes this. Okay, um, fungi break down dead organic matter. B was my answer, manufacture food. No, saprophytic nutrition involves consumption of uh, already made complex organic matter and mostly it's dead matter. But there are some saprophytes that actually can grow in tissue. Okay, like uh, athletes food is a very bad fungus which can grow in living tissue. But most of them depend, let me just say, they all depend on already made food. So B was my answer. Production of antibiotics is correct. Recycle of nutrients is correct. So therefore, these three are importances, but B is not. Number 10, the following is the dental formula of a DOG. We don't know what his name is, but how many teeth are there in the lower jaw of the dog? The denominators represent the teeth in the lower jaw, half the number of teeth in the lower jaw. The numerators represent the half the number of teeth in the upper jaw. So if this is a three, um, it means this is half the number of teeth in the lower jaw. I mean, the total number of incisors are six. Here, the total number of canines are two. The total numbers of uh, premolars is eight. Then this one is six. So if you add, this is six plus two plus eight plus six gives me 22. The answer there is D. The next question, number 11. Um, Ju Ichi, number Ju Ichi. Uh, the diagram below shows the human alimentary canal. Don't mind these scratches. I just picked up these papers from some old box. So this is a guy who was trying to scribble something here, even though not, not taught to do so. So uh, we've got the diagram of the alimentary canal. We've got P, which is the stomach, Q, which is the duodenum, then M, which is the ileum, or this, well, let me just say small intestine, and the rest of the small intestine. The question follows. Which nutrients are digested in region P, Q, and M? Here, of course, it's protein. Here, you have to check, okay? Uh, our answer is protein, because here, protein digestion continues, lipid digestion takes place, so you have to check. P, automatically, is protein. Q, starch, uh, which is done by pancreatic amylase. Then M, maltose, a, a disaccharide, meaning completion, like the enzymes that simply mount uh, carbohydrates, proteases, those which summarize the digestion of large molecules, uh, takes place in the small intestine, and then just after that, absorption uh, follows. So my answer was D. Okay, P, stomach, these are wrong. This was correct. Peptides, no, starch cannot happen. So my answer was D. So this is my, you can even use elimination method to analyze this. Question 12, the chart shows the risk of heart disease developing in men who smoke cigarettes. Um, from this diagram, this is the number of men um, that dies per 100,000. And this is the number of cigarettes they smoke per day. Look at the key, age below 45, the numbers are quite small. Okay, are not really small, they are really big, but um, uh, there's no small number when it comes to deaths. Okay, unless maybe deaths of chickens because you're about to have a party or something. Then number 45 to 54, um, they're a little bit more than 
these were below 45 then 55 to 64 are quite uh, the numbers are quite huge they're quite huge especially for those who smoke uh, 20 per day 20 cigarettes per day okay so getting to the question which group of men is most at risk of course it's these okay they the ones which are, who are 55 um uh, to 64 but specifically those who are 55 to 64 and smoke 20 cigarettes per day so my d was the answer men aged between 55 and 64 who smoke 20 cigarettes per day okay they're the ones who are the most risk because look at the deaths here so if you are skisty and you do, you want to smoke 20 per day then you know that there's higher risk for you to you know kick the bucket uh, number 13, which of the following best describes how HIV is transmitted? My answer, best answer here was um, having or doing bad things with infected, uh, with an infected person. Doing bad things with an infected person or having sexual intercourse with an, ex an infected person, especially unprotected bad things. Number 14, what type of immunity do antibodies in mother's breast milk provide? Uh, what type of immunity do uh, do the antibodies in mother's breast milk provide check it's natural the baby is not involved in the development of this immunity so the baby is passive so natural passive is the type of immunity if you say natural active then it means it comes about naturally and the baby is involved in developing it for example as the baby crawls around uh, touches the floor maybe touches the mouth they, they tend to encounter a lot of microbes bacteria that may not be so harmful but will still cause the body to develop its immunity okay uh, if you say artificial passive it means it's man-made and then the the, the the individual is not involved in developing it artificial active it's induced the 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 the, the, the whole process is 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 brought about by human uh, um interference and then the individual gets to develop their own immunity for example immunization um they, they, they inject you with um, a dead microbe and then you develop your own antibodies as you react to that dead microbe's antigens. So the answer here is 14. I mean, the answer there is D. The next question there, question 15, an experiment to investigate transpiration. Four identical leafy shoots were treated as follows. The first shoot had its upper surface covered with petroleum jelly. Or Vaseline which is waterproof the second one lower surface covered with Vaseline thirds are to shoot shoot three upper and lower surfaces covered with Vaseline then the, the last one is untreated we're investigating transpiration which is the loss of water by plants mainly via their leaves to the atmosphere okay then the graph shows the water loss by the four shoots shoot one two three four question follows which line shows the result for shoot one the line which shows the result for shoot one let's check out the the the, the, the whole arrangement for shoot one the upper surface was covered here you should have read a little bit more on leaf structure transpiration photosynthesis for you to understand where this question is rooted so understand that stomates are mostly at the lower part of the leaf or stomata if you like um so the plant is likely to lose more water where there are these stomates or holes the upper surface has got very few so the loss will be very minimal so i go for b because this should even as much as it will lose water it will not lose uh, water by transpiration like root i mean shoot four which is untreated i mean this one will lose maximum because the upper surface the lower surface I will actually be losing water but for this one the lower surface will lose more because the upper surface it actually loses less for this one the lower surface is covered meaning a lot of stomachs have been covered with waterproof vaseline so it, this one should be number c then the last one is the one which is treated on both sides it will not easily lose a lot of water so my answer there comes out as b it will lose water but not as much as the one who's untreated so remember stomata are also found on the upper surface of the leaf but there are very few up there so mostly we concentrate on the lower part because that's where a significant amount of water is lost number 16 some of the comp components of blood of a mammal are listed below antibodies fibrinogen platelets white blood cells this is transport uh, the first topic in your grade 11 biology which two of these components are involved in blood clotting 
platelets and fibrinogen? My answer is two and three. So it brings us to C. Antibodies, this is all about immunity. White blood cells, WBCs, this is all about immunity, not blood clotting. Uh, 17, why is it important to determine the resource factor of the pregnant woman? My answer is to prevent the hemolytic disease in the fetus. The fetal hemolytic disease, therefore, a condition where a fetus is, is born uh, with blood, maybe oozing from the ears and um, other complications like uh, appearing blue due to lack of oxygen. Um, the, the resource factor, this is likely to happen if the mother is negative and the baby is positive because if the baby is positive, like O positive, B positive, C positive, oh no, there's no C, A, B positive, um, it means the mother's body will make, remember, natural artificial immunity also happens via the placenta, not just in breastfed, uh, the milk that, that is breastfed in the first six months, but even via the placenta, some white blood cells can change shape. And some antibodies can actually be produced and can still pass through the placenta, which is a site for material exchange, and reach the baby's blood. So if these antibodies reach the baby's blood, who's having an antigen, the resource factor? An antigen that is foreign, an antigen that the mother doesn't have, these antibodies will actually attack those cells and bring about, bring about uh, uh, agglutination, clotting, and complications, and uh, which may lead to this condition here. The hemolytic, the fetal hemolytic disease. My answer was C. 18. The diagram shows the kidney and three tubes associated to it. Uh, this is, of course, going to the vena cover to the heart, from the heart, then the collecting duct, or no, this is actually the, the ureter, the ureter going to the bladder. Which tube will the most urea be found? The only answer which makes a lot of sense here is Z. Although the blood coming via the iota will actually have more urea and this urea will be filtered and then a lot of it will come will be filtered and passed on to the bl bladder for expulsion and a little of it will go back again in circulation so the filtration is not really 100 percent that the blood which goes back will be free of urea no a little of it a little bit of it actually remains so if there was y and z i would have still gone for y and z so here there's only z so the answer the appropriate answer there is uh z which is A. Number 19, <clears throat> excuse me more. Number 19, um, the diagrams below show skin temperature in human body which is exposed to cold air and then exposed to warm air. So skin temperature, let's look at the key, 37, 35. When it's in cold, the other parts actually reduce, but the core temperature remains 37. When exposed to warm air, the whole body becomes warm or the temperature becomes 37. And of course, expect some sweating there and, and other things that follow. What causes the observation change in the skin temperature on exposure to warm air? My answer there is more blood flowing just below the skin. This is brought about by vasodilation. Vasodilation, so the body can get rid of a lot of heat by radiation. 20, which is my last question for this paper. Which of the following, uh, I mean for this part, which of the following results from increased secretion of adrenaline? My answer is increased supply of glucose in the blood. Remember, the effects, among the effects of adrenaline is dilation of the pupil and uh, dilation of blood vessels in the, in, the, in, the, in the muscles and the heart for more oxygen to be delivered, for more glucose to be processed, and then if you are, and then it increases alertness. At the end of it all, it prepares you for uh, actions that are energetic, like uh, playing football, like you're about to score, you are, you are you're almost winning the World Cup and all that stuff. And so, increases supply of glucose in blood because um, it's a hormone that prepares us to for, for flight or fight. I end here for this paper and uh, I wish I could play a great song to make you feel like you were from listening, from uh, you know watching a nice movie and the like, but I'll be sued for copyright infringement and stuff, but I really wish I could just, okay, I think next time I'll sing a song. Okay, I'll just do a song so that you feel like you're from listening to, from great stuff. Um, okay, let me just say bye. Bye-bye for now. I'll see you in the next part of this video. Cheers.